Now, Rabotai Karim, this specific time is an auspicious time to do Tikkun Abrit. And briefly, even though we have more than 60, maybe even 70 lectures about this topic, again, it's never enough. It's never enough to go over the basics. Number one, of, on all sins, not just Tikkun Abrit, not just wasting seed. In order to do Tshuva for it, in order to relieve yourself from going to Gehenom forever, a person that wastes seed and, and dies without doing Tshuva, goes to Gehenna forever. There is nothing that they, anyone can do for them if they die. That's a reality. It's not, a, it's not an assumption. It's a reality. Just like a Mechalel Shabbat, a Jew that violates Shabbat without doing Tshuva for it, he violated Shabbat on purpose, dies, there's nothing you can do for him. Why is he in Gehenna forever? That's just a reality. There are certain things that a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, I hate these things. You do them without fixing it, even though I'm going to give you a bunch of chances to do it, you don't fix it, we're finished. The relationship is cut off permanently. So a person does not want to go to Ganom. And if you don't know what Ganom is, you don't know what happens over there, I recommend that you watch my lecture about Ganom. There's two main ones. One of them is Ganom based on countless sources all over the Torah from the Tanakh, Chumash, Gemara, Zohar, uh, and all types of other Sfarim from the Chachamim. And one of them is the, uh, the Ganom based on Hasidut. Based on Hasidut of the Baal Shem Tov, Magid Mimezrich, Rabbi Zusha, Minapoli, uh, all types of other Hasidim that have talked about Ganom. Why? Because Ganom is, again, very much a fundamental base to our belief system. We believe that the righteous get rewarded and the wicked get punished. Not just in this world. This world is nothing. This world is just a corridor in, in comparison to the eternal world. There is a place called heaven, there's a place called Gehenom, or Americans call it hell. A person that is good in this world, according to God's standards, will go to heaven. A person that's bad, in accordance to God's standards, is going to Gehenom. Sometimes for a certain amount of time, sometimes forever. There are certain sins that bring a person to Gehenom permanently. One of them is wasting seed. So, this is why the Chachamim, the Chachamim, that in the Shulchan Aruch, call wasting seed the biggest sin in the Torah. The Zohar Kadosh says there's no tshuva for such a thing, meaning that Hashem is not even going to help a person do tshuva for it. You're on your own. It's a difficult tshuva. That's why the Rambam says the biggest addiction is the most difficult tshuva. Nonetheless, you can do tshuva, and I've helped hundreds and hundreds of young men and older men do tshuva for this issue, but it requires work. It requires you to learn. It requires you to follow everything that's being said in these lectures and to listen to them on a regular basis. There's never a uh, dull moment when it comes to Tikkun Abrit. And the Chachamim knew that this is such a critical subject that they made, they designated an auspicious time after they've learned enough about how the heavens work and they knew that this time of the year where Am Yisrael reads Sefer Shmot, the book of Exodus, is an auspicious time where there are gates in heaven open to help a person overcome this desire of wasting seed, promiscuity, immorality, and so on. If you're a homosexual, you obviously can do tshuva at any time during the year, but this is the primary time to do it because you'll have more help from heaven at this point. You'll have more help from heaven at this point. If you're a young person, you're an older person, you're a single person, you're a married person, you're religious, you're not religious, this is the time to do tshuva for this issue. And the tshuva goes as follows. First and foremost, just like any other sin you want to do tshuva for, the first thing is stop it. Stop making the sin. Stop wasting seed. That's, that there is no tshuva without stopping. You can't say, I'm sorry, and you know, that, that you stole money and continue stealing. You can't say I'm sorry for violating Shabbat and you keep violating Shabbat. You can't say I'm sorry for wasting seed and you continue wasting seed a few times every week. It doesn't work that way. You have to stop. Now some people say, yeah, maybe I should stop slowly. You know, instead of doing it uh, 10 times a week, I only do it five. I only do it two. Yeah, although it's less bad to destroy less neshamot, it's not tshuva. Why? Because you're still destroying neshamot. You have to stop cold turkey. Now, of course, it's hard, and sometimes you'll fail, but it's better that you fail. It's better that you fail trying to succeed than trying to succeed while failing. You understand? When a person says, maybe I should just go from 10 to 5, and then eventually stop at some point, in essence, what they're saying is that 5 is okay. 
Five sins are okay. It's not okay. It's better that you understand zero is okay. Zero is perfect. Anything more than zero is not okay. It's better you go for simply cold turkey. And if you end up failing, you fail, you get up, you try again. Then to accept failure. Accept failure as part of the process. This is not like uh, smoking cigarettes where you cut down a little bit at a time. It's not like uh, drugs where you have to narrow your body down because your body has a certain addiction. Wasting seed is bad for your neshama and your body. It's bad for your neshama and your body. And a person has to stop. So that's the first thing. Second thing is they have to put a fence around themselves, meaning that they have to get themselves to the point where they're not putting themselves in harm's way. If you know the certain amount of types of people that you spend time with, they cause you to sin, whether that's a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a uh, friends that you hang out with, certain places that you go to, even a workplace, whatever it is, these places cause you to sin, you have to abandon ship. You can't go to those places. Again, the, uh, the, the only amount that's correct is zero. Anything above that, it's too dangerous. Why? You've already failed with her a few times. You've already failed with him. You've already failed with that. You, you can't allow yourself to put yourself in harm's way. So you have to put a fence. Now, how do you know what fence to put? That's where the education comes from. You go to our uh, videos on our uh, app, the Bezat Hashem app, or you go to our YouTube page, or you go to our website, and you'll go to the playlist called Pgama Brit, Wasting Seed. Pgama Brit, P-G-A-M, Brit, B-L-I-T, or Wasting Seed. You type those words up, you'll see dozens of lectures about the topic. Watch all of them on a regular basis. Even after you've watched one, you watched another, you keep watching it. And I'm sure this particular segment of the shia will become part of those uh, shirim you have to educate yourself that's step number two and it's part of putting a fence around yourself step number three you have to distance yourself from that sin long enough where you realize how bad it is you have to educate yourself about it and distance yourself meaning stop for an extended period of time to know that what you've done is wrong and feel bad for it feel bad for the, that you've actually sinned now, I know that every guy and even every woman that sins with herself, or with himself, or with others, or whatever, they feel bad two seconds after they've completed the sin. But that's not the bad that I'm talking about. I'm talking about bad when, you know, without the sin being involved. Meaning, a day later, you have to feel bad about it. A week later, you have to feel bad about it. Why? That's part of your tshuva. The praying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and... Admitting to him that you've made this sin, literally part of the tshuva, the Gemara Masechet Yoma says, and also the Rambam Paskins La'alecha, and also the Chinuch talks about it. One of the mitzvot of tshuva is to admit that you've made the sin to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now you're going to say, well, HaKadosh Baruch Hu already knows that I sinned. Yes, but when you admit it, when you admit it, without other people being there, just you by yourself, you admit it in an open voice, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm so sorry that I sinned against you. I'm so sorry I wasted seed. I'm so sorry I went with a Goya. I'm so sorry that I went with a Nida. I'm so sorry I did all these things against you. I'm sorry. When you say those things out loud, it starts to touch your neshama. It starts to touch your heart. It actually brings you a little bit of embarrassment, which is good for the sake of tshuva. This is the third step. You have to get to a point where Kadosh Baruch Hu is in a, which is the fourth step. Kadosh Baruch Hu testifies for you in the bed of Shemaim, you have done tshuva. Now what happens if you fail six months down the road or six years down the road, or anything else? You start tshuva again. Whatever you've done tshuva for, you did tshuva for, you have to start again. Not for the past. The past you've already done. But you have to do tshuva for what you've done recently. Point is, is that you have to fix this. Now, this is the basics of tshuva for all sins. Stop, build yourself a fence, get to a point of sorrow where you're apologizing for it to a Kadosh Baruch Hu, and get to a level where Hashem can testify for you that you've done tshuva. These are the basics for all sins. Now, specifically, now we're talking about tikkun abrit, so we're going to add a few other things that are specifically for tikkun abrit. Now, since the Chachamim knew that even if somebody, even if somebody made sins and he did tshuva if that tshuva is based on fear which 99.9999 percent of all people that do tshuva it's based on fear uh if not a hundred percent because fear is in essence the biggest motivator in the human psyche that converts all of the sins that were purposeful to accidental now although the punishment is not as dear still there is a 
stain on their neshama. There's a stain on their neshama, so they can't get rewarded in heaven the same way they'll get rewarded had they not had that stain. So what do you do for that? You do tikkunim. What's the tikkunim? Now the Chachamim in previous generations would, according to the Zohar, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Arizal said that each time a person wasted seed, or he was with an Ida, or did any of these immoral sins, they would have to fast a certain amount of time. So for example, if someone wasted seed, they would have to fast 84 times for a single session, a single sin, 84 times. If he was with a uh, with a uh, Nida, he has to fast 84 plus 82. So 166 times they'd have to fast. Now, that's for a single sin. Now, surely people sin more than once. So now in past generations, people were able to fast a lot more than us. And there's also certain strategies where you could do a certain mitzvah that calculates, that counts as if you fasted many, many times. If you fast for two days straight, if you fast for three days straight, but most people can't handle that. Most people can barely handle fasting for one day. So what do the Chachamim do, including the Baal Atanya? Baal Atanya says, fast for one day during this time, or any time really, for the specific sin, and the rest of the times that you've sinned, fix it, do a tikkun with money. Do a tikkun with money. You go, you analyze how much it costs you to eat bare minimum of food per day. You multiply that by the number of fasts you owe. So let's say, for example, you sinned one time, that's a wasting seed, that's 84. Cost of food, let's say $5. 5 times 84 is 420. So you have to give $420 in tzedakah. This is not part of ma'asil. This is not part of ma'asil because it's in essence money that you owe. It's like stolen money, if you will. So $420 that you give a uh, for the sake of this sin now you can't just give it to some zoo or some uh, average uh, local rabbi that just uh, teaches nice things but doesn't talk about wheat you have to give it specifically for the sake of this teachings meaning anyone whether it be myself or be anybody else in the world that teaches this subject and you want to help promote this subject and the publicity of this kedusha this holiness in the world this is what you donate for this is what you donate for now this is not just for men this is also for women women that have been walking around imadis their whole life and caused men to be to waste seed women that intentionally caused men to to waste seed whether it's with pictures uh films or even uh being uh, being with a person each time you're with somebody you have to do tikkun abrit and also tikkun nida you have to do tikkun abrit and tikkun nida same concept some even say they have to do tikkun for each time that she was with herself or the uh the Ben Ishchayalava Shalom says that each time a woman is with herself, she's doing Maaseh Mitzrayim. She's doing the wickedness of Egypt. That's where the Rambam forbids it in the, uh, in the uh, Mishneh Torah. Talks about it's forbidden for a woman to be like that. It's considered the acts of the Egyptians because they were immoral, the Egyptians. So a woman that's immoral with herself, it's also a sin. And the Ben Ishchai says that she produces demons just like a man produces demons when he wastes seed. And those demons hurt them. They hurt their ability to make money. They hurt their ability to have children. They hurt their ability to uh, to uh, to learn Torah. They hurt their, their ability to have shalom bayit. The put it this way: some of the greatest mekubalim, some of the greatest mekubalim we've had throughout all of the generation, including this generation, literally say this: the root of all of your problems all of them money marriage children anything health the root of all of your problems is connected to the issue of brit kedusha man or woman the root of all of your problems more than any other part of the torah the root of all of your problems the 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 father of all evil comes from the wasting seed comes from desecrating your kedusha desecrating your holiness because that's your holiness so this being an auspicious time for that tikkun is why you'll see certain keilot certain congregations especially in the hasidic world and some really serious sephardics and some really serious ashkenazim You'll see that during this time, there's teachings about this. Sometimes people learn in private. Sometimes they learn in sessions. There's uh, people fast uh, once, twice, three times a week. 
most importantly a lot of people take whatever money they have instead of wasting money on stock markets and watches and sneakers and more uh, more junk that they don't need they use that money to publicize teachings like this why this is the root of all of your problems so with that being said Rabotai Karim, we have this time this parashat shmot we're starting parashat shmot this is the beginning of shovavim this is the time to fix we're going to talk more about it later on today because it's connected to what Rav Wasserman said but nonetheless I wanted to mention this because many people are asking me constantly to give more and more information about this subject more new information more old information and as I told you guys a um some time ago I think it was like a week or two ago uh we have a secret project if you will now this project it's been in the making for over three years maybe four years but the most critical time has been the last half a year or so the last half a year maybe longer and we've been working on a secret project we don't usually like to publicize our projects but because of the times because of where we are because of the situation that we're in in the world today because this coronavirus is getting worse and worse with the uh uh, the mutations because the vaccine is causing more uh you know more confusion than anything else because the uh, we're in a situation where the Gemara Masechet Sotah page 49b says there's nothing that we can rely on other than our father in heaven and Rabbi Ephraim says Rabbi Ephraim says that what does that mean we have nothing to to rely on other than our father in heaven before the Mashiach comes that even G'dolei Adog even G'dolei Adog we're not going to have even Gedolei Ado, because many of the Gedolim are getting older and older, Shemishmo. Many of the Gedolim are sometimes not talking, or sometimes they have a uh, conflict. The point is, we have nothing to rely on. We're in such a time. So each person has to fold his sleeves and realize it's up to you. It's up to you. It's not your rabbi, not your mother, not your sister, not your father. It's you. You have to fix you. So you have to do whatever you can to fix this issue. If you have a problem getting a shiduch, if you have a problem making money, if you're losing a bunch of money, you have health issues, you have marriage issues, you have children issues. Like I said, the biggest mukubalim in history, including this generation, have outright said clearly, clearly, the root of all evil, the father of all problems is wasting seed. Meaning, you have problems, it's definitely connected to it. Now you're gonna say yeah but i haven't wasted seed in a year or two okay but who says that you're wasting seed from before that is a uh, absolved that you fixed it already okay so you stopped <laughs> but you, there's still something to fix how do you fix it you have to get other people to fix it you have to do kiruv you have to get other people to learn these lectures you can do it for free by taking this lecture and many others we have and share it share it with people now that works to a certain extent but sometimes people like something tangible something physical so you go to our website and you buy one of the usbs or you buy a box of cds that have this specific uh, teachings in it and you spread it around your whole community spread it around your whole community i've been telling you guys this for months we're trying to buy more cds to publicize it but we need more money some people care some people don't care point being is this is the time to do it you have to do it for yourself you have to do it for yourself now the usbs right now they're 50 dollars each because they're expensive they're just simply expensive to produce they have nice graphics they have a lot of stuff on them and so on but for this specific time for this specific time during the shovavim whatever a person buys a person buys a uh, uh two usbs will give them two for free meaning you're getting two for one getting two for one now the website is not gonna adjust you're gonna see two and you're getting you'll get don't worry you buy two you'll get two more you'll get four but that's only helping four people but nonetheless at least you're doing something cds are a lot cheaper and unless you can buy the uh the, this whole box of cds with uh 25 pairs of cds that's uh, in essence 50 cds uh for 150 dollars same thing anyone buys cds uh you buy two you'll get two for free so this is at least going to help you with this now if you don't have the ability or the time to give out the cds to give out the usbs you want us to do it for you no problem you could just simply donate the money on the uh website we have a specific a uh, section of the website for this issue alone for tikkun ablit the campaign specifically for this 
you go to that campaign you donate there we use that money to print cds to print usbs to to, to teach this subject over and over again to learn more to buy books and so on and so forth for the sake of this issue alone we're working on getting a bunch of different books that have to do with the subject there's not the same in english but nonetheless a lot is going into it now this is not the secret project though the secret project is something we've been working on for like i said it's been in the works for three years uh maybe longer but the most critical has been the last six months seven months or so now this project i believe is going to be bigger than anything else we've ever done perhaps the bigger than anything anyone's ever done in the kiruv world it's in the english world why it's never been done now my personal movie Baruch Hashem, of uh, my life story a movie called Hashem took back his millions was publicized last year very high production took us a year to make it a fortune to uh to to produce publicize market and so on you know hundreds of thousands of dollars have been invested into this but nonetheless it literally hit the desks of over two million people two million people have been impacted for it and every single day with no exception there are more comments on the movie of somebody else that watched it and was changed was impacted by it the movie is extraordinary Baruch Hashem. not because of my personal life just because Baruch Hashem, Hashem gave us the siyat dishmaya to say the right words and even more siyat dishmaya to get the right people to produce the right movie now that movie has had an impact now if you think that movie is big because Baruch Hashem, our whole entire organization the the biggest thing that we've done is has been the personal story and so on we've told it all over the place and people love it and people want to hear it and so on that movie has helped a lot of people we want to continue publicizing that movie and uh, continue marketing it but there's been something that we've been working on that in my opinion from what I see from my judgment of making probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 movies so far we've made about 150 movies we've produced them we've uh, we've uh, made them it's unbelievable movies short movies most of them but some of them longer in Hebrew and English we've produced a lot of movies a lot of content a lot of lectures we have thousands of lectures out online I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt without a shadow of a doubt the biggest thing we have is what we've been working on but not bigger by a factor of one not bigger by a factor of two not bigger by a factor of ten I think what we have here in the works right now is something that's bigger than a factor of a thousand simply a thousand you can call it exaggeration call it whatever you want when you see it you'll understand when you see what I understand what we have is we've been producing we've been making a tikkun abrit movie a tikkun abrit film this is the first time I'm telling it to the public there's a few individual friends that I have that know about it literally less than a handful other than that nobody else knows about it but now everybody's going to know about it we have a tikkun abrit movie in production we are in the later stages of production the movie is like nothing else we've ever done nothing else anyone's ever done in any language you know when you have a dream and you see a pretty woman you've had that now you never actually see an ugly woman in dreams it's always a pretty woman and by the way it's always the same woman for all of us all of us have a dream of the same exact woman and she's more dangerous than the satan himself who is she you're not even allowed to say her name why are you gonna call for people are addicted to it I live a normal life. Repent and you will find salvation. It has everything from the things you're hearing right now to many other things from the secular world, from the scientific world literally all types of things showing you how somebody can go from being a average kid semi-religious family or religious family let's say Christian family thinks everything's okay one day picks up a magazine sees there's pornography in it likes it waste seed 
continue searching the house and stores and so on for more magazines why he likes it surely but not too short he ends up becoming addicted to this pornography but the pornography in that day was like your average television today it's not even the pornography of today much much lighter pornography back then nonetheless this young kid that came from a religious christian house became addicted to pornography but that wasn't enough wasting seed but that wasn't enough he wanted more 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 taboo more extraordinary little by little he started finding more violent pornography which unfortunately today is some of the most popular pornography there is in the world more violent pornography more horrible things and the fantasies continued to grow but that wasn't enough why Rabbi Nachman Breslev says this desire if you don't contain it it'll get worse and worse why we learn from Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Yochanan says Ever katan ba'adam. there's a small member in a, in a person's body if you starve it it'll be satiated if it's you you um you feed it it'll always be hungry same concept here this young boy came from a family everything was good but got into what almost every boy today gets into but on their phone in a much worse way now you would think okay it's the worst case scenario was uh, what happened he uh was an adulterer cheated on his wife he never got married he became a gay what what happened to him well what happened to him is the worst possible thing it wasn't homosexuality it wasn't adultery those two but it wasn't just that he became a serial killer one of the most famous serial killers in history a person by name of Ted Bundy and this person became a serial killer who murdered dozens and dozens of people specifically women in horrific ways after doing all types of horrific things to them including violating their body after they're already dead called necrophilia why his sexual desire got out of control to the point where he simply wanted to express that desire that he saw that he learned from a pornography film in real life and it became more and more violent to the point where he killed the people and he became a serial killer and literally murdered in cold blood dozens and dozens of people and an interview that we have he says clearly himself he blames everything on his pornography addiction now if you think this is an alone experience it's not it's not a lone experience many other serial killers whether it be Ted Bundy Charles Mason uh, uh the uh, some other reshaim that are out there I keep forgetting their names Baruch Hashem, Shem reshaim Yerkav. all of these horrific people had one common denominator which is pornography which is wasting seed when our sages told us this is an auspicious time to do tikkun abrit they're not just telling us do tikkun abrit so you could save your neshama from going to Gehenna it's also save humanity save humanity from going to Gehenna and that's a reality Rabotai. 